QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Feed Center Navigation. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to get the books on key with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online bank feed practice file we set up in a prior presentation. After setting up the QuickBooks Online file, we went to the Transaction tab on the left to the Chart of Accounts tab and then reduced many of the accounts, making them inactive, including many of the expense accounts, so that as we add the information from the bank feeds, from what I call bank feed limbo, into the promised land, creating the financial statements with them, we can include the key ingredient needed, that being the account, building our chart of accounts as we do the data input from the bank feeds. We also added a checking account and then we imported data, which is similar to connecting to the bank, resulting in the same end result of having data from the bank in what we have over here, our bank transactions tab. And this is what I would call the bank feed limbo because the information in here is not yet being used to populate our financial statements, the major financial statements being the balance sheet and the income statement. So now let's just give, now that we have the data actually in our system, we can go over and just review the general layout of the bank feeds. So the bank feeds, if I open the hamburger, note that currently they're in the transactions tab. Now QuickBooks is a web-based program, so they often kind of move things around and sometimes there's multiple locations where you can find one thing, but uh, notice there's generally going to be a tab in here currently under the transactions tabs for, of course, the bank feeds. Once you're within the bank feeds tab, then you have your bank feeds which have been connected or which you have uploaded data for in these little cards. So the cards are nice because they give you kind of a, re a, a recap. And if you have multiple cards, then you have multiple accounts that you are connected to. You might have, for example, a check-in account a savings account. You might have a PayPal account. You might, you might have a credit card account, for example. And if you have personal finances, you might even be able to connect to some of your brokerage type of accounts where you have investments for, say, stocks and bonds. It used to be that these cards were a lot longer. I really like that QuickBooks has shortened the cards so they're not taking up as much space. One thing I, I don't like as much is that there's all this blank space because of these cards which are kind of taking up uh, room but you can scroll down and they've gotten better than when they first imported uh, the quickbooks uh, system for the bank feeds you've got your drop down this is another place where you can toggle between the different cards if you had multiple cards we will be adding more bank feed connections including possibly like a paypal and possibly like a uh, credit card so that we can see what it will look like when we have multiple cards up top this is a suggested thing up top, so I'm going to close this out for now. And uh, so then we have our links. So if I select the drop down, we can upload from a file. So if we wanted to upload more bank transactions, which we will do in future presentations, we could go here. We've got the managing of the connections. So if I needed to manage the connections, then I can go here if there's a problem with it or if I need to set up the connections, uh, order checks and we can order the checks, which would be something like on a, that you'd be paying for. And then you've got the Explorer. So this little icon here is is QuickBooks trying to do like a little helpful thing, kind of like an AI uh, type of thing to help you to categorize possibly your accounts, possibly giving you information to help you categorize the accounts. So it says automate bookkeeping. 
with QuickBooks AI, open a transactions to see your recommendations in this panel. So check this space for suggestions that can save you time by accurately automating bookkeeping. So obviously, you know, with all the AI and whatnot that is out there, the question is how can we further automate what has already been automated in QuickBooks? Note that the data down below has pulled in. That's great. That process is somewhat connected and automated or very connected and automated. However, we still need at least the account to be adding, which we talked about will have problems depending on the type of transaction that are coming through. But if they're electronic transfers, then you would think you would have the description. So as a bookkeeper, the question here often is, well, if you give me the information in the description, I still need to figure out what those people actually do. Like if you went to a restaurant that's just, I don't know the name of the restaurant, then I would have to go to Google oftentimes and search and say, well, what is this name? Oh, it's a restaurant. Well, what do they do with the restaurant, right? We would have to go from there. Now you would think that AI might be better and better at basically doing kind of like that Google search and whatnot from the description. That's one area of improvement. There's certain apps that might be better at that as well. However, I don't think that's going to be perfect at this point in time. No matter what you're doing, you're going to have to do some research for new transactions. If you're doing your own books, that's usually pretty easy to do because you can say, oh yeah, that's a restaurant. I went to that restaurant. I, me I remember that. But if you're doing multiple books for other people, especially if they're not located in the same area you are doing online bookkeeping, then it becomes much more difficult to say, take a description information and then assign it to a particular account when it's not obvious which account it's going to go to. And oftentimes we use the good old Google search looking for a name, which is something that you might be able to automate with things possibly like ChatGTP might be a better place to plug that uh, and, and do that kind of thing. So in any case, then up top, we've got the uh, review uh, for review. This is where the limbo system is. That's where they originally go when you first upload the transactions to QuickBooks from the bank feeds. They're basically all going to be in for review because QuickBooks doesn't have the necessary information to complete the transactions, the minimum information being the account to assign it to. And what we would also typically want to add is the contact information being vendors for outflows, customers for inflows. Once we add that information, then we can have them move over to the categorized tab, which there are none in at this point in time because none of them has yet been categorized. Note that the categorized tab is just going to be for the current session generally that you're working in QuickBooks. You can't have the categorized tab for life in here. Otherwise, it would be huge, right? It would just keep on going up and up and up. So if you log out of the bank feeds or out of the QuickBooks system and log back in, the stuff that was in the categorized tag might not be in there anymore. And then the excluded, these are going to be items that you said came through the bank feeds which you basically are trying to delete. You're saying, hey, look, that came through the bank feeds. I don't want it in the system. I want to delete it. Now, normally you don't want to do that because if it came through the bank, that means that it's, it's part of your system. You're going to need to include it because you're going to need to do it for the bank feeds. The bank is not typically wrong in that. However, there are some instances where you might want to exclude it. The most common one, of course, being if for whatever reason, duplicate transactions came through with the bank feeds. So it put duplicate transactions often happening when you first set up the bank feeds because you might have some transactions that are already in the system due to an overlap of the dates. And then sometimes there could be glitches where they have duplicate information, but they're pretty good at it at this point. So you shouldn't be deleting uh, data. And again, if you had excluded items and you log out and log back into QuickBooks, they might be removed from the excluded items. You've got your tutorial on the right hand side. If you want to take a look at that, you can also go to the register with this link. So if I click on that link, it'll, it'll take us to the bank register. So I'm going to go back to my accounts. That's where you can uh, enter data kind of manually into the register. So you could as you're entering data into this system, it, it might be useful to go to the register because the register gives you that quick, I'm going to close this out, gives you that quick look 
of what has happened in a register format in the checking account. The other way to get to the register is to go by is to go to the chart of accounts and the top accounts will typically be the checking accounts and then go into this register, which will give you a list of the transactions. And then if I go back to the chart of accounts, you can see I'm in this tab up top, which the banking tab is housed over here. <laughs> okay. So those are some navigations to the register. All right. So then the date ranges. So if I select the date ranges, you could select all dates, which is quite common uh, to use. And I'll get into that in a second, but you might want to limit the date range sometimes. So if you, so a lot of times it might be useful for the first bank reconciliations you do, maybe to do one month at a time so that you can enter the data for that first month and be very rigorous about it. And then, and then you can apply rules that will then apply to the rest of the period. However, other times, like if you have a, if you're a bookkeeper and you're, and someone comes in and says, Hey, I need to have a whole year's worth of data because I need to do my taxes then the easiest thing to do is to show all the dates and then try to sort the information by the description. So if I sort by description, then I have the multiple transactions connected to each other, which might make it easier for me to create a rule and see that it applies to multiple transactions. So, so oftentimes that's a useful tool. So I'm going to go back on over here and, and, the next one here, we can filter. We can filter by all transactions. Sometimes you might want to look at these two are the most common filters, meaning I want to look at the transactions by just the increases. So I can go just the increases. Now I've just got the increases. Then I might want to filter by description. And now I've got my connection on just the increases, which is kind of nice. I can remove the filters thusly, Xing them out. Uh, and then, of course, you have the money out, the decreases, the checks and other outflows. And then I can see the description format possibly and see all them together. So my mind is just thinking outflows now, the other side typically being expense accounts, right? And then I can close that back out. We have other filters for the recognized transactions. We don't have any recognized because we haven't uh, done any rules or done any data for QuickBooks to be able to recognize them yet suggested matches, meaning QuickBooks is going to give us some ideas of the accounts that might work. We don't have any possibly because we deleted a lot of the expense accounts. So QuickBooks doesn't even have really any anywhere to suggest where they would go because we want to make this expense accounts as we go. Uh, transfers. So these would be transactions that are going between accounts. It's guessing that the Stripe accounts are transfers because it has it in the description, I would assume. And then we have the rules applied. The rules are going to be the things that we're going to put together as we do the data input. The rules are really important because once we apply the rules, then we can automate the system. So we really want to be rigorous about the rules on the first couple months of data input, because after that, then we can let it roll typically. So then, but there are no rules applied yet, obviously. Missing payee and customer. So note that who's it from is not generally here. You might know who it's from because it's in the description, but you, QuickBooks can't make a customer or vendor based on what is in the description automatically because there's, there might be other jargon in the description. Now it can make a guess, and, and, but again, you, you don't typically want to have it just automate who the vendor or customer is going to be because you might end up with multiple vendors and customers and repetitive information. So we're going to have to add that as we go. All right. And then closing this out. So then we have the missing and unassigned. So obviously everything, uh, I'm sorry, we have the unassigned items that have not yet been assigned a category. All right, let's close this back out. Now we can search for transactions here. We can also, you know, search for whatever's in here. So cash and did it. And then it gives me a nice search field. That is nice. If I have a long list of things I'm looking for, we have the printing option. We have the export to Excel. These are things you would think not often used, but maybe you want to export it to Excel because you might be able to do some more advanced kind of filtering options and whatnot. Uh, in Excel that could be useful, but typically you got everything you need in here. So exporting to Excel doesn't do a whole lot for you, I would think. Uh, and then in the cog, before I go into the cog, note 
that you could sort this way, right? I can sort by date, which is the default, but oftentimes you might want to sort by description and then you could sort by any of these. You could sort by from or the amount or assigned, most common, date, and then by description. So then you can select all of them here. So I can select everything, uh, 10 money out transactions, 10 money in transactions. I can confirm them all. Confirming means this one's good to go, pull it into the, to the financials. I won't be able to do it, you would think, because I don't have the information at this point. And then we can edit them and exclude them. Exclude would mean pulling it over to here. So I can batch transactions. I have the confirm button on the right-hand side and the review button here that I can uh, review them with. Let's hit the drop down for, and, and by the way, be careful on that confirm because notice that this confirm, it assigned a category, which is totally wrong. Right. These are these are categories that have been assigned trying to do it automatically, but they're totally incorrect, pos partly because we don't have expense accounts for it to assign it to because we wanted to create the expense accounts as we add them. So so be very careful on their guesses. QuickBooks guesses will not always be correct. All right. So then let's go into the cog drop down. Now, if there were checks, we can add the check number. If you're not writing checks, if you're doing electronic transfers, which would be the easiest thing to do, uh, to use the bank feeds most effectively, then we don't need the check area from and to. I think that's a really important field because although, as you can see, you don't need the who it's from or to customers and vendors. If you don't add the customers and vendors, you're losing a big variant on the detail, meaning I can still create the financial statements by just adding one variable. One more variable is all I need. The account that the increases and decreases are going to, income going to income accounts, expenses going to expense accounts. However, I might want to sort my data by who I paid the vendor or who I got the money from the customer. So, so some people just don't do that and you don't have to, but you will lose a lot of data in, in there. So we want to have the two from uh, turn on grouping. If I group it, notice it's grouping it by a uh, year. I mean, by month, I don't find that to be as helpful because I can filter by year or month. So, and I'd rather sort by description across years, I mean, and, and, and months, right? So I usually keep that off by default. I believe that is the default to not have it on add new vendors. So we add common vendors to your transactions and vendor list. This is only applies to future transactions. So you can add, you know, it's trying to help you to add the vendors, which is part of the to from uh, area, which is one of the things that may, might be able to guess from the description. It says show amounts in one column. So notice all the amounts are in one column. If you uncheck this, some people like to see two columns, the amount received separate from the amount spent. I like it in one column because it's a lot thinner of, of the information uh, in one column than in two. And I think the negative numbers are easier for me to see. I, I would almost rather they make the negatives red and or bracketed. Uh, that would really make them stand out better to me, but rather than two columns. But in any case, uh, show tags field. So if you have tags that you're that you're using, which is another way to sort and filter data primarily on the income statement, uh, then we have a whole nother course or, or section that goes over tags. Then you can add tags that you can add to transactions. Editable date, uh, editable date field. Now notice if I go into a transaction, typically you can't edit the date because QuickBooks would say, why would you edit the date? That the date is what the date is. That's what it, that's when it cleared the bank, but maybe you want to edit the date. So then you can turn on the edit date field and you can edit the date. So by default, you probably want it off because you don't want to have to, it'll be a little bit faster not to tab through the date field as you're entering your information. Copy bank detail to the memo, that's on by default, meaning this information here is in the bank detail information and it's automatically putting it into the memo line. Now note that when you look at this whole field, I just want to point out that, that when I add a transaction that is an increase, if it's on the normal category transaction, the form that will be created would be a deposit form. In other words, if I hit the plus button, the form that's being created is basically a deposit form. 
The deposit form looks different. If I right click on this and duplicate the tab, let's just take a look at a deposit form. And I go into uh, the plus button and make a deposit form. Then it looks like this, right? It's a, it's a big form, but this is like the shorthand, kind of like a check register format that's going to be the deposit form. But when you actually drill down on the data, it's going to show this type of deposit form. Now the increases, you can also match them, meaning we'll talk more about that later, but that would mean that you're matching it to a transaction you already entered in the system on your end, meaning the bank feeds are helping you reconcile, not actually creating a transaction. And then you've got the record as a transfer, which would mean the bank feed is, is a transfer between two checking accounts or a checking account and a credit card account. If you look at the expense side of things, money's going out, then the normal category field up top is going to create an expense type of form typically. So the expense form is going to be under the plus button. That's going to be like a check form without the check number because it's an electronic transfer. So this would be the actual form that is being created by this shorthand form, which is kind of like, again, like a check register entry. It's a shorter entry. You could still match it, meaning if we enter the transaction on our side, then it's going to try to match it to whatever transaction we entered. We can record a transfer because the transfer could be an increase or a decrease between two financial accounts connected typically to bank feeds, to credit card accounts, to bank accounts, credit card and a bank account. And then you can record as a credit card payment, which is kind of like another form of transfer. So we'll talk about those more as we go. For now, you just wanna be thinking increases are basically deposits and the decreases are basically gonna be expense type of forms, which are like check forms decreasing uh, the checking account, but without check number. All right, so if I select this one again and I, and I go down and say, okay, so now let's take a look at copy bank. So it's copying the bank detail to the memo. So when I create a check, I'll have a, I'll have a memo that's gonna give me that information. And it's like, why not, right? right? That's gonna give me more information. That's gonna be useful uh, to have. So I would keep that on. So shows suggested rules. Now, so it's trying to give us like some suggestions on the accounts right here. So if I turn off the rules, then it's not gonna kind of bug us with their suggested rules. Sometimes the rules are, are useful to turn on. So meaning like if you record things a few times, it's gonna say like, do you wanna create a rule for that transaction? Uh, and But so if you don't wanna create a rule, that'll be annoying, but oftentimes you're gonna create the rule anyways. And so we're gonna create a rule whenever we can, whenever we have a, a new transaction show bank details now this one i think is important because you'll note that the that the 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 description here didn't pull in all the information all the time sometimes it's trying to truncate the information there's no numbers after these ones here so so that it's trying to help us with like the ai that could possibly help us to get just the information needed to populate the from to form which is the contact or the customer or the vendor but i think that added detail could be useful so i always want to see the bank detail and you can see see now it's added some more information see it didn't have all these numbers now it does that's useful because you can still copy just this information to create the customer and vendor and i want to be the one that decides which stuff is irrelevant and which stuff is not uh, uh relevant right relevant and not relevant right because because sometimes the numbers might actually be helpful uh oftentimes when you're making bank rules if you're trying to distinguish one rule from another rule then the numbering system might be able to help you to do some more advanced rule setting so i uh think that that should be checked off by default personally and i would go through and check that off so enable suggested categorization so now it's given us our suggestions on the categories over here so I'll keep that on by default, although I, I think we're going to do our own categorization. You can see there's a lot of errors in the categorization. It's not really fair. We're not being fair to QuickBooks because we deleted a lot of the expense accounts, but still be very careful with their default categorization. Now, this is the page size 50, 75. I like to see as many as I can on like one page. So I'd like to keep scrolling down instead of having to tab to the right. So I usually max that out personally, but that is gonna be that one. 
so that's the general that's the uh, general overview here and so next time we'll go through and we'll start adding uh adding these so that and as we do we'll create we'll show how they will build the uh bank the the, the reports on the left hand side they will show as we construct our balance sheet which is great because we can see we can see from scratch the creation through the bank feeds that then create the forms deposit and expenses which then construct the financial statements primarily being balance sheet income statement or profit and loss report same thing as well as the subsidiary reports